It was March. The start of the pandemic. We didn't know anything. It was jam packed. Business as usual. People coughing, sweating. Some people even vomiting at their workstations. But we just kept working. Cause that's what we were told to do. My name is Chris Smalls, former Amazon employee, fired on March 30th for holding a protest. It all started when one of my colleagues got sick. She was sneezing and had rosy cheeks. As a fellow supervisor, I told her to go home. She did. Two hours later, we had our daily sync meeting. In this meeting, I was told not to tell my employees that somebody tested positive for COVID-19 two weeks prior. After hearing that, that's when I took my stance. I went to tell my employees what was really going on. I also took action. On my own free will, I returned back to the building, sat in the cafeteria for 10 hours a day, telling all the employees the truth. Giselle, we six feet away? Yeah, put your foot out. We two feet away. Social distancing at its best. From there, we marched into the general manager's office every morning, voicing our concerns to have our demands met. We wanted the building to be closed down and sanitized. The only, the only thing we can do to fix this is close the building. Okay, sir. You have the only thing. Yes. Let like me look into that. Let me work with, uh, like, no. let me provide this feedback of work. Thanks for letting us know. Give us some time. Because in this moment, like right now, we cannot uh, make Time is, time. Time is of the essence, essence right now. People, People die, die by the hour. Guys, 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 you no. came in, you got to speak, right? People you want an answer that doesn't hour. come with you guys speaking over us. Two. We, we don't make that decision at the site level when we close or not, but we leave. We are also following the directions of the CDC, which no. every single company is. We talked to them yesterday. I'm telling you right now. So you guys, I'm not so going to continue this. We're done with this conversation. Right, okay. That's we what we are done with this conversation. So that's, that's that's so we are done. Okay. Because we can't be going to do that. All right. Just days after organizing, I was placed on a quarantine. Not my friends, not my colleagues, not the person I ride to work with, just me. It was time to organize a real walkout. At Amazon.com's Staten Island Fulfillment Center in New York City, known as JFK8, planned to walk off the walkout. Walk out. When Amazon workers walked out of the Fulfillment Center warehouse on Gulf Avenue, workers claim that the company is mishandling its response to the COVID-19 outbreak. We just want the building to be sanitized. Honestly, it's not safe. It's nowhere near safe. This building needs to shut down. I saw people getting sick every single day. I've been sending people home with different symptoms. We are the heart and soul of this building, and they're going to treat us with respect. Two hours after the protest, I was terminated over the phone for violating the quarantine policy. 814, and this story getting a whole lot of attention. Amazon under fire this morning. This assistant manager who organized a mass walkout at a distribution center on Staten Island, New York, was fired today. Amazon said it was for allegedly breaking quarantine, not to get rid of a whistleblower. But leaked notes from an internal meeting days later, at which Bezos himself was present, showed the company's leadership discussing plans to make Smalls the face of the entire union organizing movement since he is not smart or articulate, which, holy shit, that is so racist. That memo pissed a lot of people off, even within the company. Well, my name's Tim Bray, and my title is Unemployed Bum, because I quit my job last May 1st. I used to be over at Amazon Web Services, and my title there was uh, Vice President and Distinguished Engineer. Big business headline at home this morning, a Canadian vice president of Amazon has resigned in protest over the company firing whistleblowers. Saying the company culture is just too toxic. When it came to firing whistleblowers, you know, uh, the, the COVID came along, Amazon was spending huge amounts of money and effort trying to make warehouses safer. The workers were still scared about dying as a result of their work. I had no trouble believing two things at once, that Amazon is working on it, but it's still a big problem. And then they fired the activists who were, who were trying to do something about it. 
you can't argue about firing activists. It's just malevolent and unethical, and, and it's not a thing that I think one should be asked to live with. And, you know, I had a VP rank, and as a VP rank, you sort of um, stand for the company, and I just couldn't be in tune with that. Uh, he's quitting in dismay. He said that there was, uh, that Amazon fired whistleblowers, and he's paying the price for it, too. He says he's going to lose a million dollars in salary and stock options by making this move. He says that if he didn't do anything, he would be complicit. At the moment, when we're doing the arithmetic of costs and benefits, the costs borne by the workers in the warehouses are just, I don't think, adequately costed in. And the reason for that is simple, it's because they are relatively powerless. They are fungible, they can be replaced. You know, if one of them leaves, somebody else can be hired, usually in pretty short order, to replace them and get back on the air. So um, the, the, the real problem here is, is not a numbers problem, it's, it's, it's a power problem. It's the disparity in power between the very large, highly concentrated firms who dominate the heights of the big tech economy and the people who do the entry level jobs and, and I firmly believe that if, if you dislike the behavior of these companies, the only real solution for that is old fashioned politics to, you know, find politicians and elect them who will improve the regulatory and legislative framework so that the, the behaviors that irritate us are just no longer acceptable. So here is Jeff Bezos' company, Amazon, and they received a tax rebate. They paid nothing in 2018 in federal taxes. That's a corrupt tax system to begin with. But then on top of that, they received $129 million as a tax rebate. So Amazon isn't the problem. The problem isn't that Amazon is evil. The problem is that we have accepted a structure of legislation and regulation that allows companies like Amazon to play entirely by the rules, break no laws, and still do things that, when you look at them, seem like oppression. They thought firing would put it into me. <laughs> they were wrong. For those who don't know me, my name is Chris Smalls, former Amazon employee that was fired from Amazon back in March, March 30th, for raising health and safety concerns. And now we're here today because we go on March on this motherfucking Jeff Bezos house today. And this is what we're about. We're about giving the power back to the workers, putting the power in the workers' hand, and letting the workers decide their own destiny. We don't get it. Yes, we don't get it. Yes. Me being a supervisor uh, pre-COVID, uh, building a foundation, a relationship with my employees, something family-oriented, um, I carried that over into this organizing position. Um, it was easy for me to transition into this position because Amazon, ironically, pretty much prepped me for this for the last five years when I was employed. I've been a leader there, and um, when they terminated me, they got rid of one of their best leaders. And they didn't know that, but um, now I, I think they may know now. I never planned on being an organizer. I was just a concerned supervisor looking out for people, and I'm gonna to continue to do that. Since then, I organized around the country. I founded my own organization, the Congress of Essential Workers, TCOEW, to continue to uplift the voices of all essential workers. Welcome Chris Smalls. He is organizing uh, Amazon workers. When it comes to profit over safety, they will always choose profit. Yeah. Yeah. Pay your employees a living wage so they won't have to be on government subsidies. If you go on the website, all the essential items are, are sold out. Until you restock, shut it down. You have a man that's a billionaire and they're not being taxed. What part of the game is that? Tell me, where the right and wrong is in that? I always say it's not going to be Amazon versus Chris Smalls. It's going to be Amazon versus the people.